This screencast shows how we can use the top-level application template to dry out our views by wrapping them with common header and footer content. As usual, we've gotten the Rotten Potatoes homepage up. Here is the HTML source, which we got by using the View Source menu. And here I have two files side by side that we're going to match up with the HTML. On the bottom, we have index.html.haml, which we've seen before. And we learned how the Haml markup in this file is used to generate the main body of the page. What's new in this screencast is this file on top, which is application.html.haml. You'll find it in apps slash views slash layouts. This file contains the common code that is going to wrap all of the views in our application. That means we're going to see a few constructs in this file that we don't normally see in regular views. For example, this first line, which is so terse it's almost cryptic, tells Haml that it should generate markup compliant with HTML5. As explained in the book, there's a variety of HTML versions out there, and Haml can generate markup compatible with almost any of them. Here is the top-level HTML element, which is the outermost element on any page. That's why it can only occur in one place, and in Rails apps, that typically is in the application template file that we see here. We've already seen that Haml uses indentation to indicate nesting of elements, and indeed we can see that HTML, head, and title are nested in our markup. Recall that an equal sign means execute this Ruby code and substitute the result into the template. In this case, stylesheet link tag and JavaScript include tag are Rails helper methods that generate the necessary HTML elements to load the default CSS stylesheets and JavaScript code files associated with this app. Although we haven't used JavaScript in this example, when you create a new Rails app, Rails includes this tag in your default application layout in anticipation that you might want to use JavaScript. Regarding CSRF meta tags, when we discuss security and deployment, we'll see that CSRF stands for cross-site request forgery, a type of malicious attack against software as a service that can be thwarted relatively easily by a mechanism provided by Rails. This helper method generates the HTML markup for that protective feature. So in summary, these three helper methods generate HTML markup that link this page with a CSS style sheet, load any custom JavaScript code, and protect against cross-site request forgery attacks. But the really interesting part of the application template is right here. You've already seen how the yield method in Ruby is used to give up control or yield to a caller. Now you can see how it's used to dry out the views. When Rails is rendering the overall page, which is based on the application template, it will eventually come to the yield tag, which will give up control to the caller, which then generates this specific view's content. Everything before the yield will be rendered first, then yield will pass control back to render the body of the view, and then rendering could continue with any footers or other content after the yield. So this example shows not only how you can dry out your views by wrapping them in the application layout template, but also how the machinery Rails uses to do this takes advantage of a mechanism we've already seen, namely the ability to use yield to capture common behaviors that happen not just before or after another behavior, but also around it.